A very good afternoon uh, to everyone. Welcome to the second session of International Professional Week that is hosted by the Venus Business School International Undergraduate Program. So let me introduce myself first. My name is Brina Mevita Wanli, or you might know me as Ms. Brina. I'm the Subject Content Coordinator as well as Lecturer from the Business Management and Marketing Program and the Venus Business School International Undergraduate Program. And I'll be your moderator as well as host for today. So uh, we are very glad that a very beautiful lady has joined us today live from uh, JWC campus. And uh, before we start and introduce this beautiful lady right next to me, I'll just uh, discuss a bit about the rules of this session, yeah? So first of all, please keep your microphones muted at all times unless you're given permission to unmute yourself. So we will have a question and answer session later and you'll be able to unmute yourself, but you won't be able to do so uh, during the presentation. And also please turn on your camera throughout the session and use the provided virtual background. We will feel very much more familiar if you are all actually on your cam. And for Bruno students, please do change your display name uh, into the format of student ID, best full name, best class section. One more time, student ID, best full name, best class section. For example, uh, I'm pretty sure that I think most of you are already using that format. Uh, but just don't forget to also add your class section at the end of your full name. And um, for the Q&A session, you'll be able to type your question in the chat box. I will read it out for you. Or you might also read your questions yourself and you'll be given the chance to unmute, um, to unmute yourself uh, to raise uh, your question. And you can do that by using the raise hand feature on Zoom so that uh, we will allow you to unmute yourself later on. And as 80 points will be rewarded to Venusian who participated for at least 80% of the total duration, yeah? So make sure that uh, don't just come in for the first few minutes and expect that you'll get your SAP points. So you have to stay throughout the whole session, at least 80% of the meeting. And there will be an exit ticket at the end. So there will be a link that will be shared through the Zoom chat. And it's only provided at the end of the session. So if you do not fill out the exit ticket, you won't be able to claim your SAT points as well. So make sure that you actually stay throughout the whole session. Okay, so those are the rules of the meetings. So before we go into the presentation of our guest for today, let me just introduce her uh, briefly because I'm pretty sure she will introduce herself as well later. So our guest is Chilia Limantara and she is actually our uh, alumni as well. She uh, finished her double degree from um, the Hospitality and Tourism Management Program in Binus. And uh, her, uh, the partner university that she went to was the uh, Bournemouth University in the UK. And she also uh, continued her study and uh, acquired her Master of Science in Business Innovation and Entrepreneurship from University of London in the UK. And as you all know, she is the head of marketing of the union group. So it's not just the union, maybe you all just know one union, but actually it's a whole group with a lot of different brands. And she is the head of marketing of the whole union group. So thank you very much for your time. <laughs> thank you, thank you here. for having me. It is such an honor. So um, you'll be given around maybe around 20 to 30 minutes yes. to sure. present your materials and then we'll have Q&A later. Cool. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for the introduction, Ms. Brina. And thank you, Ms. Lily, for inviting me. Uh, it's been an, an, an honor, really. Uh, I haven't been back here in, what, probably nine years. <laughs> so it's been a minute. Um, I'm very excited to present about Union Group to everyone here. Uh, but before I start, let me just share the screen first so we can just get on with the material. In group, um, of course, I cannot really speak for the whole FNB industry, so I can only speak from the perspective of the union group because that's the company that I'm representing. Before we go, uh, we move uh, any further to the material. Let me just introduce myself again. Uh, Ms. Brina already talked briefly about uh, me, but yeah, here's a little bit of a snapshot of 
my education and working experience so far. Uh, as, as she said before, I graduated here from here, uh, Business International, majoring in hospitality and tourism. Uh, I took a double degree program when I was here, uh, went to Bournemouth Uni in the UK. And then I also did two batch of internships when I was uh, studying here. The first one I did in Ritz Carlton Pacific Place, and the second one I did in Ritz Carlton Mega Kuningan. And then shortly after I graduated from Bournemouth, I um, yeah I applied to Union Group and got accepted as Assistant Marketing Manager. So that's where I start at the Union Group back in 2015. <laughs> um, um, and back. Then I handled a restaurant called ENO, it's the one in Menara Jawali, Mega Kuningan. And then a year later, um, I got promoted to be the marketing manager and handling two different outlets, two different brands actually, ENO and the Dutch. And then from then on, I actually took a year gap. It's not, it's not really a gap year, but it's, I, I, I got a scholarship to do my master's uh, in London. So I went, um, a year later, I graduated uh, with uh, MSc in Business Innovation and Entrepreneurship from Uni of London uh, in Birkbeck College. Um, and then after that, uh, when I came back, the Union Group rehired me uh, and they offered me the head of marketing position. And yeah, I've been there since. <laughs> it's been what, uh, five years now till uh, from that day. Uh, in total, I spent about six, almost six and a half years uh, at the union group. So uh, that's quite a, yeah, a time done there. <laughs> but yeah, I'm still here and I'm still, hey, welcome, welcome. Please join us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Pardon the interruption. We just have more people coming in. Uh, Awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, I'm going to move on and talk a little bit about Union Group now that you all know about me. Okay. So how many of you here know Union Group? <laughs> Except for these three people at the front. <laughs> how about the people in the back? Do you guys know about Union Group before? Yeah. How many of you likes to go to uh, Union or any of our outlets, really? Do you guys know all of these brands? Yeah, OK, cool. Right, so for those of you who doesn't know that some of these brands are under the Union group, now you know. So all of these brands um, on the screen right now, um, it's part of the union group. In total, we have nine brands at the moment and 20 outlets in total. And we're going to have some more coming, coming this year. Um, I think when talking about the brand itself, when people say about the union group, they don't exactly know what it is, but they know the brand as a separate uh, entity. You know, it's like I heard a lot of people saying, oh, I didn't know that Benedict was part of the union group. <laughs> Uh, or I didn't know that Cork and School was also Union Group because some of these brands, like for example, Cork and School, Loi, and Union, they are all um, they've been around long before the Union Group was even a thing. So it was it, before the Union Group brand was introduced. All these restaurants were were already around. So that's probably why the Union Group name is not really that familiar to uh, some of us. But yeah. If you want to know more about our restaurants, we have our website over there and also the um, Instagram, so you can check it out. And just for fun, I need, I, I think I'm gonna break the ice a little bit, maybe here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bonus point for participations. I bring <laughs> vouchers from Union. Yay. Also, also <laughs> okay. the, not only for the, for this one here, yes. right? This um, online can also participate. Yes. Yeah? The people online, mm -hmm. I think there are how many people? 200, now? around 200. Oh, there are 230 30, people yeah. online. Uh, you all can participate. Maybe I can just throw the first question to the people here. Mm -hmm. And then the second one to people on Zoom. And then the third one is just whoever it is. Okay. Who so, will answer. Okay. 
The first one will go to the offline participants, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, whoever is the fastest, just shoot your hand up and yeah, I'll just... It's 100,000, by the way. So 100,000 union voucher. Get excited. You can just <laughs> cash it out right away there. You just like redeem it. I mean, not cash it out. <laughs> <laughs> no minimum purchase? No, no minimum oh, purchase. See, no minimum purchase. You can actually get free stuff right away, right? Uh, <laughs> yes. Right away. Okay. okay. The first question, which one of this brand is the oldest brand of the union group? Okay. Right. That is the wrong answer. Oh, <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, Any try? Else? Yeah. Sorry? No. Also wrong. <laughs> And then job on chat. Okay, people on Zoom, please. Uh, uh, I think lots of people said Louis. Okay, let's just open it to the, the people online as well. well. Unless somebody else here want to give another try. Louis is the, is the only one, the only answer from those who are online. Unfortunately, Louis is also not the correct answer. Then, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should go to the moderator yeah. instead, the voucher. <laughs> nope. Roma is brand new. <laughs> I think I think in the end it's gonna come down to yeah. who I must answer. Pierre is also not correct. Benedict is wrong. Oh, oh God. I'm sorry. Oh, I got everything. I got I got the wrong answer. Yeah, the, the right answer here. Owen. Owen student number twenty three zero one nine six zero 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 four three Owen. Uh, yeah. I think you can, uh, you will be contacted by one of our admin, yeah, Owen, so that you can give your contact details and this voucher will be shipped to, yes. yeah. yeah, I will send it to Owen. Unfortunately, the people here <laughs> didn't get no, any. Yeah. Wait, I still have two more. Okay. So, Let's move on to the second question. Cork and School, uh, we opened Cork and School back in 20, 2007. So Cork and School this year is 15 years old. <laughs> it's way older than the union group itself as a company. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> uh, and then, okay, second let's, question? let's try the second question. Mm -hmm. The second question, had uh, the, the price is still the same, uh, 100,000 voucher from union. Which one of this one is the youngest, the latest one? <laughs> I said Roma was brand new, but I didn't say it was the latest was. one. So let's nice try, but yep. Sorry? Yeah. Nope. Wrong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got it right over there. <laughs> the cocktail club. The cocktail club. Yes. That's the latest one we have over here. Yes. The cocktail club. Congratulations, what's your name? What's your name? Amel, Amel. congratulations Amel. Uh, later I will give it to you, yeah, after the session. <laughs> All right, okay. Maybe um, the last question will be, uh, in, yeah, uh, there'll be a bonus, uh, bonus gift for the last question. So um, the question is pretty simple. How many union outlets do we have at the moment to this day? Union, because everybody, I, I believe that everybody here knows union. How many? And then as a bonus, I will throw in a box of union latest donuts. <laughs> uh, so you will get a, a 100,000 voucher and a box of um, union latest donut flavor. If you can mention all seven outlets, the location of all Oh, I'm sorry. I just you gave just out the. the name. <laughs> I gave out the okay. brand. <laughs> it's it's okay. a change. A change of question. A change of question. <laughs> so there are actually seven outlets. No, right? just, just okay. Just name all seven union outlets. The location yeah. of se all seven union outlets. Yeah. Angel. <laughs> Wow, congratulations. Okay. Right. Yay. Thank you so much for your What's name? name. What's your name? Kevin. Kevin. Okay, I'm Mel and Kevin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your participation. Um, I can give the donuts to you if you want to go to Snan City later. <laughs> right after the session. <laughs> we have, uh, by the way, we have the marketing for Union here as well. 
Uh, Hi, Angel Hi. is over here. My colleague. Hi, Angel. <laughs> Thank you for coming. And we have quite a few people from Union as well, actually. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> All right. Okay. That was it. Thank you so much for participating, the people online too. Okay. Let's move on. Now, on to the material. Wait. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about um, a few challenges that we face as a group in FNB industry, where uh, where we were before the pandemic hit. So where we left off, and then after that, I want to talk briefly about what we've been doing so far throughout the pandemic. Um, here we will. I will talk about some solutions, uh, how we manage to go through the whole um, hardships, like the whole situation with uh, COVID restrictions. And then I'm um, going to talk briefly about what we are focusing uh, moving forward uh, from this year onwards. So let's start. Uh, yeah, where we were before the pandemic hit. So if you know that the union group has been around, yeah, you know, from, from earlier when I explained, union group has been around for a while. And then obviously, as a group, we always want to continuously grow our brand, grow our products, and uh, be the leading uh, FNB and restaurant company in Jakarta. So obviously, when we talk about expansion, we talk about new outlet openings. So right before the pandemic hits, we were actually planning to do quite a few openings. Um, this was back in 2020. So the first one we plan to open, we managed to open on time, Union Central Park, Union, the latest Union outlet that we opened, which was in January 2020. This, is, this was two months before the lockdown. And then that was okay. And then the second opening in 2020 was Roma, Osteria, and Bar. I said it was brand new. Yeah, it was actually two years it's actually two years old. We opened in March. Exactly two days later, uh, the government said that we are on lockdown, all restaurants to be closed, no dine-in. And we didn't know then that we can do takeaway and delivery. So it was all shut. Um, obviously, it came in as a shock to all of us, uh, to the whole country, uh, to the whole world, really. But yeah, as an FNB business, it was... Uh, really huge yeah. and then the third one Pierre it was supposed to open in uh, April 2020 and then we delayed and we met, but we managed to open eventually in April 2021 so it was one year delay and then like I said before the cocktail club was the latest brand that we have it was also due to open end of 2020 and we delayed until October 2021 so with this, these new openings, uh, this happened around, yeah, on the first year of pandemic, right? These are the challenges that we have to face because in 2020, it just so happened that out of four, four openings from number one to number four, three of them are brand new concept. We never introduced them before. Uh, the concept is new. The brand is new. Nobody knows what it is. And then even the, the type of cuisine that we present are also brand new. So, of course, that came in as a big challenge for us, how to introduce a new brand in the middle of pandemic. And then nobody knows that, that there were no precedents. You know? Nobody knows what's going to happen. Nobody knows how to navigate the whole situation so the challenge is uh real like the struggle is real um and then also the second problem that we had was government res restrictions obviously we appreciate that uh, the government are trying to do the best thing to contain the pandemic but then um again nobody knows what's going to happen and people were, were just sort of like trying to see if it works or not. So there are quite a lot of uh, government regulation changes over the year, in the past two years, really. Uh, so one minute we can open uh, for then in, and then one minute we, we have to close, and then one minute we have, 
we can increase the restaurant capacity to like 50% and then we we are back to yeah you know you know the terms i mean psbb ppkm yeah there there are quite a lot of them so it was definitely a big hit for fnb business yeah. uh, i'm going to talk about all the challenges that we face first and then later on i will just uh, talk briefly about the solutions that we come up with okay uh, those are the challenges around new openings and then the next thing is talking from marketing perspective because yeah i can't really speak about the whole business in general because that would be too broad since i'm representing my marketing department so um talking about events it's actually the heart of what our marketing department is what we do uh the way the union group as a brand is has always been known as um the pioneer or something of something and then uh the the what the the kind of like products and services and the i think the events like it's part of a lifestyle to a lot of people so that's what we are really known for that's why um having events every now and then like we we have we had we had used to have events regularly having these events are essentially the heart of what we do as a marketing of the union group so back in the days we have uh, quite a lot of different types of events um so we did uh, culinary events sometimes we created a theme around the the dish that we want to present like for example this was a photo of um oh sorry this was a photo of union pick uh, which we transform into a diner for one day um i don't know if any of you have been to union pick but uh we changed the whole decor and then we changed the like uh, um the the painting and then yeah we use a different kind of tablecloth and we change the whole vibe into a diner and then we only serve diner diner food for for one day and then we did we did another event a seafood event and then we have a like seafood display on union by, uh, at union by us and then we did uh quite a few events with um brands like bisaka for example where we source premium meats and then uh, just sell it make it available for only one night uh, this is our own head chef, sorry our own chef uh, chef luca and then we did another event uh like more towards uh cocktail events so we did a uh, guest shift with bartender from overseas or maybe from out of town from bali and then yeah we just make a some kind of like satellite bar in the middle of the restaurant so that people can see uh, the bartender mixing drinks. And of course the special cocktails will only be available on that day only. And then we did wine events, quite a lot of them at Cork and School especially. We, we did wine bar, we did wine dinner. And then we also did a, quite a lot of party events. Um, we used to invite dj from overseas and then uh ben we did a lot of pro parties as well at cork and school country club and then new year's eve party has always been a thing for us at cork uh country club and then the last thing that we always really we, we really enjoy doing is doing a collab with uh other brands so last time we did one with this one was with Loka 4 from Bali. And then we also did one with Burn Ends from Singapore. And then Park Bench Delhi also from Singapore. Uh, Hong Kong Takeover. Uh, there was one week we invited about six to different bars from Hong Kong to come over here and take over the bar at, yeah, for different outlets of ours. So these were the kind of events, the, the, the whole range of events that we used to do. And in total, back in 2019, oh, okay, there's another one, uh, collab event. Back in 2019, I counted my marketing calendar 
2019, we held about 124 events. But this is in FNB calendar, discounting the fact that there's um, Ramadan month, uh, probably about two months, yeah, in total every year. So on average, we have about 12 events per month. This is like the extent to the extent of activities that we did back then in 2019. So can you imagine when the pandemic happened, when, when the pandemic hits, we had to cease everything like from we, we have to stop everything. Uh, we can't even do dine in service. Yeti. So we have to stop uh we have to postpone all of our events. And back then, we didn't know how long it's going to last. We thought that it was going to be postponed for three months. And then we were we already had a few events uh, confirmed at that month. I remember there was, there was one big event with a guest chef from Bali. And then we had to cancel that altogether because we didn't know how long it's going to last. So the challenges around here is because all of our re events require physical presence of the customers there, there will be no events if um, the guests can't come to our outlets right and then there was travel ban also and at that time it wasn't only overseas travel it was also domestic travels so it was definitely a big challenge for us to tackle especially not knowing what to do and when it's going to uh, end, right? And then again, uh, government restrictions. Um, it comes in all forms, really. Operating hours, capacity, uh, uh, the seating capacity, and also uh, the entertainment. We can't do any, we can't have any DJ, we can't have any live band playing. So it was, it was, yeah, it was tough, really. So... That's about events. And then next one, I'm gonna talk about a little bit about our loyalty program, which we call U plus rewards. So this loyalty program is not actually a new, new thing. We launched it back in March, 2019. So it's been around for a while uh, before the pandemic hits. But then when it comes to talking about loyalty, loyalty program, um, the, the, the essence of it is that we keep on maintaining it over the time, right? And then when the pandemic hits, obviously the whole dynamic of it changes. And then it becomes difficult for us to maintain how to, because the what's in U plus rewards are all of these points. We retain our loyal customers by giving them points every for every transactions. And then we give them exciting rewards that can uh, that they can redeem with their points. The rewards can be in a form of um, food items that they really like. And then we have a whole catalog of it. It can be cocktails, it can be bottles, it can be wine, uh, it can be dining vouchers as well. And then we also provide exclusive benefits based on their uh, membership tier. So the challenge is how to keep the program running while when, when there, there is no dine-in. People don't really come to the outlets and have the, the whole experience. Yes, they can, of course, still get points from their transactions, but then redeeming it becomes a little bit difficult because, um, yeah, the, the union group brands have always been about service right um so it's it's a full service restaurant so when of course when people come in to dine with us it's going to be easier for us to just uh, for our staff to just come over to the table and say uh do you have do you have a u plus rewards member or something like that so it's it becomes easier to activate this program but once there's no dine in then the yeah the program kind of suffers so and then comes um the extension of expired dates become a problem as well because the points that they've been collected throughout the the year of 2019 suddenly were about to expire and then they have no way of redeeming it because we're not open yet so then we have to extend the expiry dates and everything so that's quite a hassle really um 
Yeah, okay. I think I touch all points about challenges. Um, if any of you have any questions, I think we can uh, keep it uh, for later, but uh, yeah. I think later there will be Q and A session. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but okay. you're free to actually leave your questions on yeah. the chat box in case you might forget them later. So you can just type them in the chat box first. But we're going to ask them uh, in the Q and A sessions later. Okay, cool. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next part of my presentation, which is what we've been doing throughout the pandemic so far. I guess I, I must say that we are not out yet <laughs> but we are getting there so hopefully by the end of this year uh things will be back to normal like the way it used to be uh but here's what we've been doing so far obviously i mentioned a lot about uh we can't do dining anymore so the whole landscape the whole strategy change to take away and delivery so the very first thing that we did uh, back then was um, trying to change our products. Uh, with dine-in, we usually just uh, present like um, our menu is usually individual portion, and then we change it to a larger portion, family style to share menu that they can bring home. And then we also offer free delivery to their doorstep. So we created this, this whole range of products called Fees at, Fees at Home. And then the second one that we did was private dining, which was, um, I think only certain brand um, is doing this one uh, because uh, the whole range of it is, is it's supposed to be a premium uh, exclusive experience that they can enjoy at home. So literally our chef will go to the guest house and um, prepare all the food there and just uh, we will have our staff um, serving uh, the dinner and yeah, just have the whole package of experience just as if they dine with us in the restaurant. And then we have also um, activated uh, online more online ordering platform. Um, before the pandemic, we've already we've already worked with GoFood and GrabFood. No, actually that's not true. Grab food, Grab food actually we only started about early 2020, right before the pandemic hits. So for for the longest time we were only available on GoFood. And then when the pandemic hits, we actually activated this uh, our own online ordering platform where they can just pick and choose whatever they want and our our team will actually deliver it to their home so in the beginning it was literally our staff will go there but i think after a while uh we found out that it, it wasn't really that efficient so we partnered with bluebird so to this day if you ordered something like cake or yeah, big portion meal for the whole family. It's uh, not possible for us to send it with uh, Ajal. So we have to find a way to set, somehow get it to your place. So we partner with Bluebird. And then we also start tapping into Tokopedia as well, but only for certain brands again. Uh, we started with Union, of course. Uh, and then we also did, we also opened a bottle shop uh, on Tokopedia and also Benedict Cork and Screw. Um, yeah, we did quite a few things. <laughs> some of them worked, some of them did not. I only mentioned a few that work here. <laughs> and then the last thing that we did was um, doing a lot of takeaway and delivery promo, like tactics from, from tactics, products, and discount, really. So from the product side, uh, we did, uh, we launched a few items that is only available through pre-orders. So we make it in a very limited quantities. Like we did a special release donuts with Musang King Durian, for example, for Union. And then we only make available like probably 20 boxes or something. And then, yeah, it's whoever the fastest will get will get them and of course it's, it falls more under the premium category 
so the price range is a bit higher but then uh yeah i think um when it comes to trend people tend to follow that and then even though it was like probably the the sales probably not going to be much but then we keep our brand alive with the the whole excitement and the whole innovation and a new range of product it's how people remember our brand and then we also offer free delivery because we know that uh delivery costs delivery the uh, delivery charge is usually uh can be quite high around jakarta yeah, especially um so we offer a free delivery for a minimum purchase of 350000 uh that that is only for jakarta area uh and we added about uh 125000 for any delivery outside of jakarta so it's uh bodetabek only yeah so we can't we can't really deliver to bandung or any other city <laughs> okay uh and then we did a lot of takeaway and delivery discount and also bundle promo like we started doing escopy who who here likes to drink escopy local yeah yeah okay <laughs> so uh, during the pandemic we released a um a whole new package of escopy local we bundle it up with our donuts and then we also make a uh one big bottle one one liter so when we deliver to their house it won't it's it's not going to be like a small tiny portion so those are the things that we did uh in how to like somewhat try to still make a, our business running and still trying to innovate our products to get people to what still still in, keep our brands close to their hearts more or less okay in terms of communications social media and digital media strategy we change that a lot i mean um when we when we open for dine-in the whole communication flows from people trying to contact us our our reservation line trying to get a table at our outlets and then we usually have a database of customer that we send our promotions to but we only send out event promotions like when we when we have events then we will have to promote it and invite people then we will send out those promo materials to uh, our our database we 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 don't really do we didn't really do much of a like product promotion through our channel before i mean we did email we did social media and stuff but we never actually actively approach our customers through whatsapp personal whatsapp or uh, messages and yeah because of the pandemic uh, and people can't really come to us so we have to actively come to reach out to them so that they can know that hey we offer this new thing and hey we also do takeaway and delivery hey we we also do 10 percent off for all takeaways things like that so the whole the whole um way of communicating with our customers just suddenly change and we have to really think fast at that time because when the government announced that there will be no dine-in um it wasn't sure whether we can still open for takeaway and delivery i think i remember there was uh quite a gap like probably a week or two gaps that we cannot open at all so those were the time when we actually discuss the whole thing and see what is the best solution. So, and then, yeah, the Salesforce team was born. Um, so we have a dedicated team of sales. So it's, um, it's unlikely for an F&B business to have a Salesforce team, really. Um, it's usually only for, um, yeah, companies that are working in sales. But for f &B, it's pretty weird, but then, it actually works. Uh, it actually worked because uh, all of our customers felt like, uh, oh, the interaction is um, is what they need because it's something that compared to online online ordering platform, I think it works better because 
um, I think most of our customers still require that personal connection, personal interaction, even though it's only through WhatsApp, they like to ask questions like, oh, is, can, I, can I make this not spicy or can I, can I just add some things on top of that or things like that? So yeah, it's the, the people behind the communications is really important still. So that's why we, uh, we formed this Salesforce team so that even though everything is done online, it's not losing the human touch of it, personal touch of it. And then we did, we, we did a lot of influencers marketing as well. We send out, whenever we did launch, new launches, uh, product launches, we will always send it to influencers. And then there are quite a lot of influencers who help uh, FNB businesses throughout the pandemic because obviously it was, it was really hard for everyone. So influencers have been actively uh, helping FNB businesses by uh, yeah, either contacting us or just like being very welcome when we want to promote something through their channels. So we really appreciate that. Um, and then we also did, uh, we started doing Instagram Live, we did Insta and Google Ads as well. Those are the few things that we did in terms of communications. So yeah, I think I'm, I'm, towards, I'm moving towards the end of my presentation here. Um, I think it would be much more exciting to see if there's any question and, um, and yeah, I can go from there. But this is moving forward, what we want to focus on 2022. I mean, I believe that the worst has passed, it's behind us. <laughs> so we really want to bring back the events. Um, we are starting to do more collab, event collab with, um, yeah, either restaurants or bars from uh, Bali and hopefully soon from overseas like Singapore, Hong Kong. And then we, we will start doing more theme parties, DJ event. And then of course, the, our loyalty program is something that we really want to focus on as well. And then looking at the dynamic of it, I think a lot of people uh, still want to stay at home as well. Some, some of them might still be a little bit uh, um, scared to go out. So our online ordering will stay there. So we will not, we will not remove it because these four are the ones that work for us at the moment. And even though now we are slowly starting to gain more um, people are starting to come back to dining in again, but then, yeah, we still want to cater to those who are still at home, basically. Yeah, so I think that's all about it. Um, I'm, I hope I'm not talking for too long. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, oh yeah, I have one more slide. The last one. Uh, at the end of the day, the heart of our business is about people, product, and service. Um, I think uh, as a group, as a company, the union group always believes that if they take care of their people, which is their staff, then the product and services that will uh, be offered to our customers will be top-notch. So it's something that we always believe in. So yeah. I think moving forward, this is something that we will still continue on doing. And yeah, this, these are the things that, uh, that got us here today. So something that we should hold on to moving forward. So yeah, exactly. that's about it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Let's give her a round of applause. Okay, so I think it was really interesting uh, to see. Uh, actually, in the beginning, I was kind of thinking that uh, maybe f &B business is not the industry that was hit the hardest, at least because, you know, you, we still have grab food. People still need to eat. You still have go food, you know. So the f &B industry is still, in a way, running throughout the pandemic, not like, for example, like the travel and tourism industry that is, you know, completely shut. But however, after taking a look at your presentation, Julia, I see that actually even inside the industry itself, we have different layers, basically. There are uh, businesses that just offer food, which will not have a problem actually, right, with the pandemic because we can get it delivered. But I think the union group 
literally focuses on experience instead of mm. just the food itself, mm. right? Okay. If I'm not mistaken, I think I also was a part of the the diner event, but it was mm. in Union Mall Kapa Gading. Okay, yeah, and it was there too. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. So I, I think I still remember last time. You know, it's not just about the food, but it's about you know getting together. Mm. With the, you know, um, with the experience, the whole experience, uh, the feel. You know, talking to your friends, and I think it was quite exclusive that you need to book in advance, and you won't get a place, right? So. It's a whole different, um, you know, eating experience. So mm. that is why I can imagine how how hard the pandemic has hit um, yes, the union right. group, yeah. right? So um, moving on, we are going to the Q and A session. We have uh, at least around half an hour for the Q and A. I have seen a few questions in the chat box, but I think I will throw in the first chance to those who are here, the offline. Um, audience anyone has any question that you want to ask directly to Julia yes RJ go ahead um, should I uh, you can you can ask your question I will repeat it so that everyone can hear hmm? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so okay. the union group consists a lot of brands, right? How do you consist uh, on, you know, work uh, focusing on each brand or at the same time? Okay. RJ, maybe you can uh, just introduce yourself briefly. Oh, uh, hello. My name is uh, RJ. I'm from uh, Business BMM. Management and Marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my first year. And uh, again, my question with Union being a big group and having uh, lots of, you know, their brands and franchi franchise, how do you, how does each franchise balance each other out? And like, how do each uh, franchise, uh, you know, uh, work together, uh, you know, work together rather than focusing on, you know, each of, of their own? Mm. Okay. So let me just recap that in case, you know, people don't uh, hear the voice clearly. So basically, RJ asked, uh, because Union Group has a lot of different brands, so how can uh, you manage the different, maybe characteristics of the different brands and how to balance them out, basically? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank ahead. you so much for the question, RJ. Uh, should we go one question by one or... Yeah, do you want to answer directly? Yeah, we, yeah. I okay. think we can answer first okay. and then while waiting for others to, um, to, to ask, yeah. yeah, type in their questions. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that is a very good question, really. <laughs> and sometimes, even, uh, yeah, there are quite a lot of people ask me about this as well uh, during the interviews, like uh, job interview. Usually people will ask me like, oh yeah, what makes it different? What makes this brand different from the other? And what makes it like having the same union group identity? I think it all goes from, I'm gonna go back to my slides really. It's okay, take your time. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go back here. I think it's just like the way, uh, what makes us, strong as a group is these three so it's about the people about the product and service and i think if you if you know that if if you know that cork and school and union are from the same group you will notice that there are similarities in the way we uh deliver our service uh when, when, when you dine in like with our staff, because everybody is trained the same way. So that's one. Um, but in terms of um, different, different, differentiating the brands, uh, whenever we want to work on new concept, we always try not to make it like too similar to, to the other. Yeah. Yes. Even though there are some brands who are quite similar to uh, one and another, it still has its own characteristic. Like for example, I'm gonna talk about our Italian brands. We have three Italian brands, Bistecca, Cafe Milano, and Roma. So these three are, uh, the head chef of these three brands are the same, uh, Chef Luca. Uh, and the product that we offer is probably slightly, slightly similar in terms of 
the cuisine itself because it's Italian yeah, cu- yeah. cuisine. And people when people heard about Italian, okay, I'm gonna eat pizza, pasta. pasta. Yeah. But then when it comes to bistecca, it's more a uh, higher up market brand that we it's a higher up market that we are targeting. Mm-hmm. So we only sell uh, we, we sell premium steaks. We sell pasta too. We sell. We don't sell pizza there. <laughs> we have pasta, but like pasta with more premium ingredients, for example. And then with Roma, we have um, a slightly less premium experience, lesser than Bisteca, but not too mess. Still, it's still like up there. Uh, and then we we we. In terms of products, we have all kinds of range of Italian food. Like pasta, we have pasta, we have pizza, but then it focuses more on Roman cuisine. So um, it's different than Cafe Milano because Cafe Milano is more of a day-to-day kind of staple. You know, it's like more common pasta like aglio olio, uh, carbonara, and then yeah, the pi- the pizza are something that is quite simple and quite classic like mar- margarita yeah something like that so we are every every single time when we want to open a new brand we will always uh talk about the whole concept the whole idea and being very careful and even even the whole like you know uh talking about the branding the way it looks the interior and then the food and then also the way we put the voice into that brand as well it's something that we work on um, so that each brand has its own character something like that but in the essence of it we always try to put the people the product and the service it always comes first so yeah Yeah. i hope that answers it (laughs) So you still have one, um, in a way, um, soul yeah. to, the, to the whole group. Yes. But then Correct. after that, from then on, you spread it out to yes. the different uh, genre and basically yeah. target market, right? Exactly. I see. Okay, thank you very much for the question and also yeah. for the answer, Chilia. Thank you. I think, Kevin, did you want to ask a question? Yeah, uh, go ahead. Um, Is it not on? That's the hello. Oh yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, actually, Maybe you can stand up so we can see you. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I've got a question actually about the union group. So, um, you did display a lot of brands, right, in the uh, presentation before. Yeah. Like we do see a lot of brands like Lowy, um, and then Cork and Screw. And etc. and etc. Right? So, like, my question is, um, how do you actually build that foundation? Like, your business, like, from what I see from the brands, they never fail. You know, like, a lot of people come, and um, it's just very popular. You know, like, how do you actually build that foundation? You know, like, like the basics of the of brand itself. Okay, thank and you. Another thing, um, from what I've, from what I've seen from these brands. They are targeting a middle upper class, right? So, uh, don't you like have any ideas to make like a restaurant for the middle lower class people? You know. So yeah, that is my question. Okay, thank you very much, Kevin. Again, I think I would like to kind of recap for those who are online. The first question from Kevin was, uh, "What was the base of the the branding? Yeah, basically, that all of these brands are very famous and lots of people come, and um, it's not just one; it's actually many. Mm. And what is like the maybe the recipe of mm. of, of the branding um, strategy? Mm. And then the second question is because most of the not most, I think all of the brands are targeting middle up uh, class. Mm-hmm. Uh, will you have any plans probably of targeting the, the middle lower class in the future? Yeah, probably. Okay, go ahead. Thank you so much for the question, Kevin. Um, I think for the first question, the, the short answer will be years of experience. <laughs> um, I mean, it, like people said that Roma wasn't built in a day. Um, 
I think in every single business, it's it's the same like that. You can't really build something out of out of nothing and just expect it to work right away. So I think I mentioned briefly about uh, how the union group itself as a company didn't didn't actually come around until later. So some of these brands are even older than the union group itself. For example, Cork and Screw, I mentioned it's 15 years old this, this year. So it's been around for 15 years. And then Lowy is actually 14 years old this year. And Union, we opened our first union is 20, in 2011. So from the long, for the longest time, from 2015, sorry, 2005 to, uh, so, uh, no, 2007, I'm sorry, I got my math mixed up. So from 2007 till 2011, we only had at that time, Corken School, Lowy Union, and I don't know if you know Canteen or Casa. Any of you know of that? You're probably too young for that. Yeah. <laughs> Miss, do you young. know Casa? Pa Marcus, maybe tell. Casa. <laughs> it's in Kemang, yeah. Canteen, the one in Plaza Indonesia. And then also there's one in Pacific Place as well. Yeah. I mm. think we've like yeah. maybe heard of it, but don't really recall yeah. the place. So if you mentioned earlier that everything that we do worked <laughs> that's not actually true <laughs> like any other businesses some some brands might fail too so in total i think we have quite a few brands that we brought up that didn't work out yeah like what i mentioned earlier canteen casa and even in my profile earlier i mentioned that i was an assistant marketing manager for eno ENO is not with us anymore. It's not around anymore. And also the Dutch, the Dutch is also closed down during, uh, during the pandemic. So I think what makes it successful is throughout the years of experience and all those trial and error thing. I think what, what we always feel as a group is that if it doesn't work out, then we shouldn't push it. But if it works out, then we should take it and just like try to implement it somewhere else and just see if it works. So that's basically the answer to the first question. What was the second one again? The second one is whether you have any plans on uh, eyeing for the middle loan. Oh, uh, yeah. That is also a really good question. Um, I think of all these brands, the one that caters to slightly lower market, middle to low market is Benedict and probably Union from the bakery side of it. I think, yeah, well, Union cake is still pretty much in, a, in the range of like one whole cake can cost up to seven, 750 tau. But I think for slice cake and then for, for donuts, we are still like, we, we can still compete in the middle, low market. In the future, do we think about uh, trying to reach out the, to the lower market? Probably yes, but um, yeah, at the moment, we are still trying to focus on expanding our current brands that we have. So after 2020, we haven't really opened a new concept anymore. So the latest one we did was the cocktail club, but the next the next few openings will be our existing brands. Like we're gonna bring Union to Surabaya. If there's any of you, is Surabaya native? <laughs> next time you come to Surabaya, come check us out in Pakuan Mall. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think there's one question online. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, by the way, for the question and for the answer as well. I think yeah, again, yeah, there's no instant success, right? Yeah. And there's no just one recipe that works for all. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to experience it yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we also have questions from the uh, from the Zoom chat. I think for the first two questions, it's quite simple and straightforward. Mm -hmm. So let's answer those two first. Yeah, Syria. Mm -hmm. The first one is why hasn't the brand cocktail club be included in the U Plus Reward app? <laughs> Um, um <laughs> we hear some responses from the union internal <laughs> employees as well. 
Mm -hmm. I will take this question as a feedback <laughs> <laughs> and not answer question. why. Coming soon, coming <laughs> soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, I, will, I will bring it up to the team and mm -hmm. see what we can do with, about it. <laughs> Okay, and the second one, is it possible to do internship in the union? Group? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we open we open up a few opportunities before. I mean, uh, in my marketing uh, department itself, I hired one intern before, and then she ended up working with us now. Oh, yeah, we ended nice. up having her as one of our marketing manager now. Um, in any other department, I think there are quite a few opportunities. I don't know um, how sure it will be, but then if you guys want to give it a try, I put down the contact at the end of my slides, actually. Wait, let me just see. I think this is a very valuable information yeah, for all yeah. of the students here, and I'm pretty sure there are around 200 students, also those who are here, who will probably need to do their internship anytime soon. Yeah. I mean, we, we are always open to um, giving out opportunities to people, especially like with uh, our brands keep on expanding. So mm -hmm. it's always nice to see new talents coming in. Mm -hmm. So if there's any of you uh, interested to be part of our team, you can email your inquiries to rec recruitment at uniongroupjakarta.com. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, is, it, is it on the screen? Is it on their screen? Um, is it on not. the screen? I think it's on is the it screen, still right? sharing? It's still screen sharing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's a uh, recruitment at uniongroupjakarta.com. Yeah. Uh, Please, um, you can email me for any marketing inquiries, but for any internship opportunities, job opportunities, please direct your email to recruitment at uniongroupjakarta.com. Yeah. So, okay. 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 Uh, Next question. Um, during the pandemic situation, many changes in concern. Uh, by the way, um, Adalia, maybe you want to speak up uh, for yourself? We will, allow to, we will allow you to unmute yourself if you want to do so. Adelia? Hello? Yeah, I think I, I can hear your voice. Okay. Um, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Adelia. I'm from uh, Creative Marketing. Um, actually, I'm really curious because um, I'm also really love the CAC in Union. So, <laughs> yeah, um, during the pandemic situation, we, we know there's many changes, right? So, yeah, and Union Group have a lot of brand. And I'm really curious how to make everything going well, because from the slide that uh, Miss Celia presented before, almost uh, every food and beverage uh, using the similar way, right, to sustain their business. So I just wanted to know. Thank you. So if I get what uh, if I get what you're saying, Adelia, is that um, I think most of the other restaurants are basically also implementing something that is similar to what the Union Group has implemented. Mm -hmm. But what makes Union a bit more special in a way that you have basically survived the pandemic up until now? Hmm. Okay. Well, interesting question. Um, I think there is a thing called the first move advantage. Uh, I don't know if First you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. It's it's something that because Union Group has started, uh, has has been in the industry for quite some time now. So I think we were one of the first who come up with the concept of like you know dining. It should be some kind of like a lifestyle, not just like about the food, but it's also about the service, about the whole ambience of the restaurant. So I think there's that. Um, and then I think maintaining the brand identity and um, again, the service, it's, it's something that it's unique to union group. So sometimes it's, it's, it's like this. If you have a recipe of a cake, you can just give it out to other people and they could try to copy it. But then right. most of the time they would not make the same exact product as the one that we do. It's something like that. Mm. It's, um, 
I, I think the core of it, it has something to do with the, the whole culture of the company itself and how how we put our people first. So that's why it's something that is come out of like as a as a whole package, you know. Mm-hmm. It's not something that it's not just about the product, it's not just about the service on its own, it's not just about the the interior on its own. So it's it's it has to be the combination of all mm-hmm. of that combined. So I think I can't really speak for any other brand who tried to, I don't know, do the same concept and did not su- success. I, I I don't know what's what's that. We can only answer from the Unigo perspective. And what we do is we, yeah, again, uh, we learn from our mistakes. We learn from the past and see what worked and what didn't and whatever it is that, that's working, then we try to implement it for any other brands and just try to tweak it a little bit so that we don't create same brands but only have different names. Mm. So something like that. Okay, exactly. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Perfect. So um, is there any more question from the online audience or maybe also offline? Oh, okay. Pa Marco, go ahead. Um. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm not a marketing guy, basically, but um, I'm interested in when you mentioned on the marketing strategy that you had prior the pandemic, during the pandemic, and after. I see that that you are actually diversifying your marketing strategy even to the online uh, delivery and online ordering, which is also interesting to me as well. Because I uh, I thought that uh, Union Group would probably stay on the uh, on-site uh, marketing strategy, but then you maybe it's a it's a it's a force major basically that you had to change to or you have to uh, diversify it into the online. Um, talking about consumer behavior in the future time, what would be the trend actually? Because basically you have the customer that normally do uh, an, uh, an, an on-site uh, buyings. Now they also have an option to do online ordering. Mm-hmm. So what would be the trend for uh, your customer? Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you for the question, Pat. Um, do, do you want to... I think it's already think quite... It's, it's, really yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think it's, it's very clear. Okay. Um, so I think moving forward, the trend will be, okay, it will be slightly divided between our customers itself, like with the people who are starting to get bored staying at home, they will, they have come back actually uh, since early this year when, even when the Omicron wave hit, uh, I think people was, were sort of like already had enough staying at home i mean people have finally feel fine to just you know dine with us and um i think yeah moving forward those people who our loyal customers who really enjoy our brand and who really who've been with us for the long time for a long long time they will just come back to us and just start uh having the old experience back but I think the way we see it is not that, yes, we change a little bit uh, in ways of contacting our customers, but then I think after the pandemic is done, we ended up having more, I would say more reach to all of those customers because because we are now, back in the days, we only focus on dining, right? We didn't really touch any segment of take, takeaway and delivery. We only did go food. And that's all about it. But now after the pandemic, we decided to just keep the online ordering and then the grab food and Tokopedia, we, we kept it on. So it's something that that's still, it, it caters to a bigger market even because with uh, Tokopedia, for example, or our online delivery, it delivers up to Bodetabek area, right? So people who live in Bogor, uh, Depok, they can still enjoy our food not having to come to our, our restaurants. So I think that will stay. And it, it somewhat broadens our reach. Um, so yeah, that's why we decided to uh, keep it. But yeah, uh, moving forward, I think things are gonna, like any other businesses, I think things will 
still continue to be a hybrid thingy moving forward. People who wants to die in, we cater to them. People who wants to stay at home, we still have things for them. So that's it. Yeah, so I think there is always like um, the rainbow after the rain, right? Because even if you did not, probably, if the pandemic did not happen, maybe actually um, union group will have only stayed, you know, as on-site yeah. restaurants, right? Yeah. And you will Correct. have lost uh, a bigger uh, mm. market yeah. that's out there that, uh, that actually maybe just want to enjoy the food yes. instead of Correct. the whole experience so yes. i think yeah there's always um you know something good yeah <laughs> yeah it's always a, a learning life. curve for us as well <laughs> and to be honest i think the wave of people coming back to on-site restaurants will be a lot bigger mm -hmm. than last time right because yes. you know even people are allowed to to take off their masks outside now mm -hmm. so people are getting real excited at least i am excited yes. <laughs> to you know to join all of the events that you know not just the union group have but you know even people are already going for concerts right yes so correct i think yeah. bringing back all of the events will have a, a huge um wave yes. in a way back yes to to we yeah. hope it will work yeah. yeah we hope that maybe it's gonna be much higher than before the pandemic right yes <laughs> Okay. For sure. Thank okay. you very much. Uh, any last questions before we conclude the session from those who are here, maybe, or from those who are online? Anything else that you'd like to ask to Chilia? You might not have a second chance. <laughs> we are very honored to have you here. <laughs> Nope, that is all. Okay, then uh, before I conclude the session, I would like to say thank you very much, Julia. Thank you for having me. And thank you, Pak Indra. <laughs> he just, I just didn't see, I didn't see you that you're here. Uh, Pak Indra here is, uh, he used to be my lecturer right. here in Binus and he was the one who, um, yeah, brought you up <laughs> kind of yeah he contacted me saying that miss lily wants to have a speaker <laughs> for this event so yeah thank you for having me yeah. i think it was such an interesting session i have also learned a lot from you from thank you session. thank you it was really great and then i i can see how uh, you know the different um the same industry having different layers yes. and also how that um there's no instant success yeah i think yeah. it's also something that most of the young people should uh, really think about nowadays yes, right correct. because you know you see a lot of people having such an instant success just in a matters of you know days yes. even right yeah. and people are blinded in a way mm -hmm. that you they don't see all of the hard work behind it yes. i'm pretty sure the union group has also done its um you know it's hard work in a way that maybe you have nine brands now but we don't know how many have failed right yeah to bring up these That's nine <laughs> very successful brands yep yeah so thank you very much once again and thank i would you. like to remind all of the audience especially Binusian, Binus students if you would like to claim your sat points make sure to actually fill up the exit link that is also applicable to those who are here right Lily, those who are here please do fill out the exit link which are already provided in the zoom chat so again the requirements for your sat points will be 80 percent uh, attendance as well as um filling up this exit link that is shown on the zoom chat right now okay so uh, I would like now to call our chairperson, <laughs> Bu Lili, to present a token of appreciation to our speaker. Please, Bu. <laughs> oh, I can join? I can join the picture? I don't think I should be in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, so let me just close the session by reminding you that we will still have uh, another four days of this event, International Professional Week. It will be the next session will be tomorrow at ten thirty. So please make sure to also visit that, and we will have different industry. Uh, experts coming in in different days yeah so today was uh, F &B and we'll have uh, different industries 
in the next few days. So make sure to also check out our uh, next sessions. Okay, that will be all from me. Let us take a group picture, not just with those who are here, but also those who are online. So please turn on your cam. Those who are online, let's take a group picture. We have 13 slides. Wow. Oh, wow. Amazing. There are 239 participants in total. And plus those who are here, probably we have around 250 participants today. So should we take a group picture with everyone who are here? Do you really? The online first. And then after that, we'll have our in here. OK, let me. Uh, let me guide the, the photo session. Let's starting from the first slide. We are not here yet. <laughs> we are not on the first slide. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we are? Okay, let's let's smile as well. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay, second slide. One, two, three. Third slide. One, two, three. Fourth slide. One, two, three, fifth slide, one, two, three, six slide, one, two, three, seven slide, one, two, three, eight slide, one, two, three, nine slide, one, two, three, ten slide, one, two, three, eleven slide, one, two, three, twelve slide, one, two, three, and that's it. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. Uh, those who are on site, you can all come forward. I'll put, we'll put on our masks and we can take a picture together. Again, those who are online, thank you very much for your attendance. Don't forget to fill out the exit link and hope to see you in the next session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.